Somehow, I had it in my head that I shouldn't get a real camera until I'd mastered mobile photography. I was incredibly wrong, and the X100V proves that more than anything. There are three key components to the X100V. The sensor, the lens, and most importantly, the size. There are other cameras in this sort of price performance ratio. There are ones that cost more, there are cameras that cost less, but there's something special about the X100 line, which has been defining Fuji's sensor lineup for the past 11 years. And the X100V is the best one yet. There are a lot of ways that the X100V reminds me of a phone camera. You know, it's a fixed lens and you can't really zoom. I know on some phones there are multiple lenses which are zooming, but to zoom on those lenses you need to use digital optics and well the X100V can do that and it can turn on an HDR mode. The beauty of it is actually more in the shooting experience. It's full of vintage buttons and dials and it has an actual viewfinder so you can hold it up to your face and twist the lens for focus. It's it's a real camera experience and combining that with like the modern Fujifilm X-Trans sensor which is in other cameras like the X-S10 that's filming me now and the X-T3 that does a lot of other video work on this channel but having it in this portable package is amazing and it, it's led me to carrying the camera around more than I ever thought I would with a digital camera. Let me play out a scenario for you. You can see Brad in the t-shirt here is disappointed because all he has is a phone camera. Still fun, but not as powerful as the X100V. Let's try again. So this is me with the X100V, look at that. I walk in snapping, I'm snapping the whole way through. I take more than one photo because I'm so inspired as I walk through the scene with the X100V and little fist bump on the way out. That's just the way it is. That's life with the X100V, that is happiness. See you next time. Sorry to overplay that whole bit, but I seriously cannot understate how great and like just purely functional it's been to have like a good camera that shoots high quality images and gets me very deep raw files to work with on my like person at all times. Like everywhere my photography has improved, not just because the camera's better, but because it's a real camera that I get to put through all kinds of situations at all times. If you're just looking for a camera to get really, really into photography, I think this might be it because even though it doesn't really have the most variable zooms and whatnot, its portability makes it functionable in almost every circumstance and that truly is amazing. I'll see you in the studio. Getting back to the main crux of the video, yes, you can learn a ton from shooting with your phone camera, but using a real camera like the X100V gives you so much more inspiration and just practical experience. Phones nowadays are effortless, and that reduced friction removes a learning curve that can be so rewarding about photography. However, when you're holding a Fujifilm camera like the X100V and it confronts you with these incredibly tactile dials and the camera's basically begging you to learn the exposure triangle and get out at golden hour, it's all these things that just sort of mean more about photography that the iPhone never really inspired me to do. I have a ton of fun shooting with cameras on phones, but something like this is just exciting. You know, I can't rely on the HDR to save every photo and to be honest, the moodiness of the shadows is more fun and I can't zoom, but that's kind of awesome too because now I'm learning how to shoot with a 35 millimeter lens more than I ever thought possible. It just forces me to get out at a golden hour and morning times and play with shadows and lighting and it's just more fun as a photography tool. It's not snap a picture and get a great shot, it's 
learn how to snap a picture and then get really, really great shots because the camera is so much more powerful. Anyway, this is kind of starting to fall into like the nerdy photography aspects and smartphone photography is kind of ignoring that. And that's kind of my point. This is a real photography tool and that's the fun of it. Okay, before I get into the cons of the X100V, there's, there isn't that many. I'll mention the fun elements that are really important on a camera like this since it's not that cheap. And so having small sort of luxurious touches justifies that high price tag, which sits around $1,700 in Canada. So while I didn't actually use this hybrid viewfinder that much in hybrid mode, it was very cool nonetheless. Other luxurious touches obviously are this very sharp, very fast F2 lens which works well in low light, the metal construction, the nice articulating screen, and somewhat capable video options. You obviously can't really record longer than 10 minutes at a time and it's not useful for vlogging, it definitely overheats very fast, but a tripod shot with this nice lens and the awesome Fujifilm film simulations can work out really, really great. I didn't have many problems with this camera either, but I would have liked to see a D-pad similar to the one on the X-T3. There definitely seems to be enough space to jam one on the back, and I just found swipe controls on the screen didn't function as reliably as the D-pad on my X-T3. So those four extra customization buttons when I'm shooting, I find very, very helpful, and I would love to have them on the X100 because I'm often using that in very fast paced scenarios, just walking around. Another thing is when I was wearing this camera around my neck, it would jostle around, and I don't know if my touch screen was going off on my shirt or if I was jiggling the little joystick, but the, focus was always like jammed in the bottom corners and I had to reset it almost every time I was like lifting it up, which was a little bit annoying. Sometimes as well, the screen would lag, which was kind of annoying. It didn't detract because I could half press the shutter and it would usually catch up, but it was strange to see considering this camera internally is so similar to the X-T3 and the X-S10 that I normally use, which both have had like no lag in my experience and are almost always like ready to go. And the final issue, and this is like, they say it's because it's a small camera, but this one really, really sucks. So this camera is technically weatherproofed, except for the lens. So there's this little ring on the front that you can screw off. You can place it with another ring that will allow you to screw filters onto this lens. Yes, by default, you can't add filters onto this lens, which is the only way to fully weatherproof it. So you need to buy an adapter that costs like 50 to 100 bucks, depending on which one you're gonna get. And then you have to get a filter just to weatherproof this camera, which Fuji has taken like so much pride in making this small and portable and able to go everywhere except if it's raining and then you have to pay extra to take it with you and at this price that's a little annoying so hopefully in the future the next one will just solve that problem and the whole thing will be weatherproofed and ideally a filter thread will just be built onto the lens like every other lens pretty much so that's my like biggest gripe and that one's kind of annoying Either way, I don't think any of that is going to stop me from buying this camera. The only thing that is going to stop me is its high price tag and the fact that I already own two other Fujifilm cameras. This does have me looking to buy either the 23 f2 or the 27, I think it's an f2.8 lens, just to have a more compact lens on the X-S10 for street photography, but as much as I love this camera, it is just a photo camera, so you have to be aware of that, and if you want to do video work like we're doing here, it might not be the best tool for you, as sexy and as fun as it really is. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about the X100V. Obviously, there's tons of content online. Uh, GX Ace is one of my favorite videos. I mean, DP Review TV has just a really great video that dish off the video capabilities of the camera really well. So maybe check those out or check out our other content on the channel and like and subscribe to help us grow. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Goodbye. I don't have a good outro for this one. Photo time.